Hey, massive legend here. Now I know you're probably thinking, why does this fella look so metal? Honestly, I just had this gear laying around. I genuinely do not remember how I actually got it. I have no idea. So, my hopeful apprentices, you wish to learn the ways of a sorcerer, to command the full might of the elements, moving mountains, raining hellfire, and just being incredibly cool to look at. Like, damn. Well, before you embark, you should know that such heady power demands a hefty price, mostly in the form of really, really long cast times. Yet, if you believe you have the patience to claim mastery over the forces of sorcery, then look no further. I shall offer whatever aid I can to the aspiring mind, and someday you too shall be just really cool to look at, like, nice. damn though! If Mage is the white mage of Dragon's Dogma, then Sorcerer is the black mage. It's a contender for spiciest class in the entire game thanks to the absolutely bonkers magic system that the game boasts, which goes flying off the hinges when you're playing this class. Meteor storms, spears of ice, earthquakes and hurricanes, the Sorcerer has access to insane spells that are exactly as devastating as they look. Carried over from Mage are your core skills, Levitate, Focus Bolt, and Magic Agent. Sorcerer can also make use of every one of Mage's elemental affinity buffs, as well as several spells which have already been covered in the Mage Guide. So let's start off with High Miasma. This spell creates a large damaging field that poisons enemies who linger within it for too long. You can use this defensively to keep you safe while you cast other spells, and it can actually be surprisingly useful for hitting dragon's hearts and other weak points. This spell synergizes well with High Maelstrom, which we'll cover later, useful for finishing off enemies left in the eye of Maelstrom's Hurricane. This is also highly effective at inflicting debilitations when wielding rusted, golden, or oiled weapons. High Lassitude is effectively the same spell as Miasma, but instead of poison, it inflicts Torpor, which slows enemy movement to a crawl. Stacking multiple fields of the spell on an enemy can even stop their movement entirely. Because you can start casting again immediately after using the spell, you can use this on down bosses to really double down on damage while you extend the window that they're vulnerable for. I don't usually bother to mention the lower level version of most skills, but in this case, regular lassitude has an extremely fast cast time, so you can comfortably half charge it, so to speak, and drop as many fields as you like in a short span of time. Pretty solid and sometimes overlooked choice for utility, keep this one in mind. High Necromancy is more or less what it sounds like. You summon some scary skeletons and shivers down your spine. Calling 8 undead spirits to aid you. The spell is useful for both offense and defense, effectively surrounding you in an aura of skulls that will seek out attackers who get too close, within 6 meters specifically, before latching onto them and FUCKING EXPLODING! Necromancy can serve as protection against enemies that tend to ambush you, so you'll typically want to prepare this one before a fight starts. High Void Spell is a support spell that clears the caster and allies of debuffs such as lowered strength, damage, magic, and magic defense, but more importantly, it cures petrifaction, so you may want to consider bringing this along because, let's be honest, you forgot to bring along that secret softener, didn't you? Yeah, I know, it happens to me too. High Exequy generates a magical aura over one or multiple enemies, and any caught in it will receive a circular countdown sigil. Once this countdown is complete, the caster can release the spell to instantly kill all applicable targets. Yes, that includes most bosses regardless of how big and scary they are. However, be warned, because this is an instant kill spell, it's balanced out by taking much much longer to execute for strong enemies. As a result, it is not practical for an actual fight. It can still be useful to cheese some stuff though. High Petrifaction is also more or less what it sounds like. Assuming they aren't immune, if an enemy lingers too long in the field this spell creates, it will become petrified and turn to stone. While this can kill an enemy outright, most large enemies aren't affected by it and it takes effect so slowly that it becomes inconsistent and there are better options available. High Bolide is where the fun begins. The caster calls down 10 flaming meteors that deal heavy damage and knock down on impact, raining down in a slow, steady pattern over an area in front of the caster and slightly behind. Of these 10 meteors, only two will strike an individual target, meaning while it may not be the best choice for focused damage on a large enemy, it can be very helpful for crowd control, and honestly, the sheer spectacle of the spell makes it pretty convincing. Despite the 2 meteor rule, each one has a 2 meter range on the damage radius. 
so enemies grouped together will get hit by the splash damage of other meteors for reduced but still substantial damage. Also worth noting that creatures with multiple heads, such as Hydras and Chimeras, have each head counted as an individual target, making High Bolide especially effective against them. So here's where I get into a special little mechanic unique to Sorcerers. Interestingly, they can combine spellcasting with other Sorcerers in the party to shorten their cast times in a process called spell syncing. High Bolide is one of the specific spells suitable for spell syncing, as is every spell I'm about to list after it, such as High Gisel. This one's a personal favourite. See this dragon? Yeah, me neither. It's a spell that summons an enormous spire of ice that rapidly drives into its target. Due to its sheer size, the ice itself covers a massive radius while being very accurate, making it absolutely fantastic for targeting weak points. As you just saw, it's especially ideal for knocking dragons right out of the sky and dealing huge damage in the process. It will work every single time. Given that the spell is composed of a number of spikes, it deals several hits at once. And if used too far from a target, they won't all land. Typically covers a little under 20 meters, but I'd recommend being a little closer to make sure you nail your target. This one just looks so sick, dude. Spearing fellas through the heart never gets old. High Fulmination allows the caster to say, I am the storm that is approaching. You create a spherical field of lightning that delivers damage to enemies within its radius while electrifying nearby allies, dealing additional lightning damage to foes who come into contact with them. Due to long cast times, it's best to prepare this one either prior to or going into a fight. It's great for dealing with groups and keeping pesky small fry at bay. Like all of Sorcerer's unique elemental spells, this one's worth keeping on the table. High Seism conjures large stone pillars over a broad area in front of the caster, dealing pretty hefty damage in knockdown. It's really helpful for when you just need to tell everything to shut the fuck up and sit down for a second. The damage of this spell actually comes in three specific phases. The first is a pure magic blast that covers a wide area. The second is the stone pillars themselves, striking enemies with strong holy damage and massive knockdown. And as for the third, it's possible these pillars will create large boulders that rain down on enemies, dealing physical damage. Unlike Bolide, this spell doesn't follow targets, instead striking in a somewhat random pattern. But it covers so much ground you're bound to hit something, especially when fighting larger enemies. High Maelstrom has you charge a spell for a while and once you use it, good job, you win the game. The spell creates an enormous hurricane to provide absolutely unmatched crowd control. If something exists in the room with you, they are in the radius of this spell. If they exist anywhere within the same dimension, chances are they are getting launched into fucking orbit. And don't worry, because once they're up there, they won't be coming back down until they're dead because this spell lasts for roughly... Seven years! Now, but for real, this spell is fantastic. It takes a good while to cast, but it's worth the wait, drawing enemies into its core to deal magic damage before launching them so high they take fall damage. It can be cast at a maximum range of around 18 meters, and the actual size of the spell is... BIG! I don't have any actual measurements, but it's a chunky one. And while it will only lift smaller enemies, it will still deal damage to larger ones and potentially stun them all the same. Given the spell can't damage you, standing in the center to lure enemies into the storm is a solid defensive tactic. Be warned though that once this spell gets used, if you're nearby, understand that you simply won't be able to see jack shit until it's gone. Not only does the spell itself obscure you a lot, it creates a filter over the screen when you're nearby that makes it harder to see. Other than that, the only real downside is that it deals dark damage specifically but let's be honest, what the fuck is actually weak to darkness in this game? Aside from fellas who equip radiance. <laughs> I think it's time we took a look at some of those augments. Okay, so the first one you might want to check out is Awareness, which reduces damage taken while casting, along with Emphasis, which boosts knockdown power of most spells, Gravitas, which makes it harder for you to be knocked down while casting, Aquity, which boosts your magic by 20%, and finally, Articulacy, which reduces cast time by 10%. Yes, this stacks with the Worm King's Ring. Sorcerer is a vastly powerful vocation, geared towards wiping out groups of foes with explosive spells with enough stopping power to still deal with larger enemies. As I mentioned, its biggest drawback is long casting times, and while these can at least be mitigated, you're probably going to be somewhat dependent upon your pawns for keeping enemies distracted, unless you want to spend an inordinate amount of time having wolves drag your face through the dirt. Regardless, if you want to wield the full might of the game's vastly unique and rewarding magic system, this is the vocation for you. With a spell for almost any situation, Sorcerer is a magical engine of destruction capable of wreaking mass havoc from a safe distance, weaving magic with style and elegance. But we're not done dabbling in magic just yet. Next up is Mystic Knight.
Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to subscribe, drop a like, and let me know your thoughts in the comments. You can join my Discord for updates and to hang out with the lovely members of the Thieves Guild. I can also be followed on Twitter, and if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so on Patreon, or simply donate directly via PayPal. Links can be found in the description below. Have a great day, I'll catch you next time.